This week, I've teamed up once again with the great people at Audible.com to bring you another episode of our healthy weekly meal prep series. If you're not familiar with Audible, it is a great app that allows you to download and listen to audiobooks. Now, if you're anything like me and you spend a ton of time in your kitchen, you'll understand why audiobooks are so valuable. I love listening to them while I'm chopping and sauteing away. Most recently, I've been rereading one of my all-time favorite books, Fall on Your Knees by Anne Marie McDonald, and it's actually better the second time around. The coolest part about this partnership is that Audible is offering each of you a free audiobook download, and all you have to do is go to audible.com slash the domestic geek, and you can choose from any of their 180,000 titles. The best part is you can be downloading and listening in minutes. How great is that? Now let's get started with this week's menu. It's all inspired by the yummy flavors of India and it is completely vegetarian. To kick things off this week, we are making a wonderful coconut curry. So I've got a large saucepan on the stove and I'm just gonna get started by melting some coconut oil. Once my oil is heated up, I'm going to add some yellow onion. I'm going to saute my onion for three to four minutes and then I'm going to add even more yummy flavor with some minced garlic and some minced ginger. As far as I'm concerned, these three flavors are the holy trifecta of Indian cooking. As soon as these guys become fragrant, I'm going to add my curry powder and then follow it up with some tomato paste. I'm gonna let this all cook up for about 30 seconds and then I'm going to add my coconut milk and some vegetable broth. To this beautiful mixture, I'm going to add all sorts of veggies like carrots, sweet potatoes, and cauliflower. And then I'm gonna finish it off with some canned chickpeas. I'm going to bring this all to a boil and then turn my heat down to low, cover my pot, and let it simmer. About five minutes before your curry is ready, you can stir in your greens. Today, I'm using some beautiful baby spinach. When it's ready, you'll know because your house will smell amazing. You can eat it right away or you can store it in your refrigerator for between four and five days. Next up, I'm going to get started on my rice. So in a small saucepan on the stove, I'm just melting some coconut oil. To that, I'm going to add some cumin seeds. I'm going to toast these seeds for between 30 seconds and a minute. As soon as they start to become fragrant, I'm going to add my basmati rice and some water. I'm going to bring this to a boil and then reduce my heat to low, cover my pot, and let this cook for between 15 and 20 minutes. Once it's done, I'm going to turn my heat off entirely and then let it sit for another five minutes. I'm going to finish this beautiful rice off with some chopped green onion, some fresh coriander, and some salt and some pepper. This rice makes the perfect accompaniment to our yummy coconut curry and also to our next dish, which is an amazing eggplant curry I know you guys are going to love. All I'm going to do is take my whole eggplant and rub it with some olive oil. Next, I'm going to poke it with a fork to make sure it cooks evenly. Next, I'm going to put it in the oven under a high broiler. The secret is making sure you turn your eggplant regularly while it's under the broiler so it doesn't get overcooked in one spot and undercooked in another. After between 20 and 30 minutes, your eggplant should be ready. You'll know it's ready because the skin will be completely black. All you want to do is wrap your eggplant in some foil and let it sit for between 15 and 20 minutes or until it's cool to the touch. Next, you are simply going to peel off the skin and then mash up all the eggplant goodness inside. Then you can set your mashed eggplant aside and get moving with the rest of this recipe. So in a skillet, I'm heating some coconut oil and I'm going to toast my cumin seeds very much the same way I did it with my rice. As soon as those cumin seeds become fragrant, we are going to add our chopped yellow onion. We're going to cook the onion until it's softened and then we are going to add a whole lot of yumminess. So I have some garlic and some ginger and a minced green chili. Now if you're not into the heat, you can feel free to leave that chili out. Next, I'm going to add a whole lot of yummy spice. So I've got some ground turmeric, some ground coriander, some red chili powder, and some garam masala. All of these can be found at your local supermarket. Once all your spices have had a chance to toast up, it's time to add your tomatoes. You wanna to cook your tomatoes until they start to break down completely. Once that happens, you can add your eggplant, give this a good stir, and then simmer it for between 10 and 15 minutes or until all of those flavors come together. When it's done, it packs quite the kick, which is why I like to cool it down with the amazing raita I'm about to show you. Raita is an incredible Indian yogurt dip that is perfect for cooling down super hot foods. So I'm getting started with some plain yogurt in a bowl, and to that, I am going to add some shredded cucumber that I've just drained the water from. 
To that, I am going to add some freshly squeezed lemon juice, some fresh mint, a little bit of cumin, and some salt and pepper. It's as simple as that. This refreshing raita can be served with either of those yummy curries or quite simply with some fresh veggies, like some red pepper, some cauliflower, or some peas. For our salad this week, we're putting together a very simple but very flavorful carrot salad. And it all starts with some freshly grated carrot. I am going to make a very simple dressing by combining some vinegar with some fresh lemon juice, a little cumin, some pepper and salt, and finally, some freshly grated ginger. We are going to pour our dressing over our carrots and finish this off with some freshly chopped coriander and some freshly chopped mint. We're finishing things off this week with my mango yogurt parfaits. Now I'm using plain yogurt in this recipe. You could absolutely do this with some vanilla yogurt instead or even some coconut yogurt. How yummy would that be? So I've got some yogurt in the bottom of my jar and then I'm going to drizzle it with a little bit of honey. To that, I'm going to add some freshly chopped mango and top it with a little more yogurt and finish this off with some crushed pistachios. If you can't find shelled pistachios in your supermarket, don't sweat it at all. You could also do this with some almonds. That would be just as delicious. These will last in your fridge for between four and five days. I really hope you love this week's menu and that you'll give these tasty recipes a try. And if you do, be sure to tweet or Instagram me a photo because you know I love seeing what you're coming up with in your very own kitchens. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to The Domestic Geek because there's lots more deliciousness where this came from.